today on our regular demo sessions we have Andriy Shevtsov uh, presenting updates on ECTLs. So Andriy, uh, feel free to take it over. Right here. Thank you, Eugenie. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, do you see my presentation? We do. Great, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Andriy Shevtsov. I'm test engineer from Magento Cloud team, and today I'm going to show a presentation about our latest releases. We have a few different tools which we develop and support as a cloud team. Uh, let me remind you it real quick. Uh, we have its tools, which is the main package which deploy and install Magento on cloud. Uh, we have Magento Cloud Docker. It is our local sandbox which emulates real cloud environment. And uh, there are some differences between real cloud environment and cloud Docker, but the main concept are the same. Uh, also, we have Magento Cloud patches, which allow us to deliver some fixes for cloud customers, and uh, we have cloud components, which extend Magento Commerce Core functionality on cloud. Uh, let's take a look what exactly we included it in our re re releases. Um, I'm going to start from the user tools. Um, we added new CLI command for creating config file which called Magento and YAML from console. We added support for Elasticsearch 7.9 and uh, Redis 6 for compatibility with Magento 2.4.2. Uh, it's for upcoming release of Magento 2.4.2. It will include such version of services, so we want to be compatible with it. Uh, we added new validation for services version and improved existence validators. Uh, also, we added new options, pip composer dump auto load uh, for resolving issues after removing generated folder. I will explain a little bit more later what that means. Also, we added new warning errors about uh, Mage mod, uh, improved logs by adding information about warm up concurrency, and improved functional tests execution speed. I would like to provide some details about some of the changes. Uh, let's start from new command which called cloud config create. Uh, was an internal request from our DevOps team. They are built some automation around cloud tech and they need way to generate Magento and YAML. So right now you are able to set needed configuration using new command and JSON input. You can update existing file or create new one. We have two options, like create and update. Uh, let me show how it works. Uh, do you see my uh, editor? We do. Thank you. Here is file, I'm going to remove it. And create new one. This file will include some configuration for static content deployment. It's wrong project. You can show here. Here's this file. Um, okay, let's go to presentation. So it's how this for command work. Um, next new option is composer dump out a lot. We added this option to skip Composer dump auto load processing when deploying a cloud project to the cloud Docker environment. 
There are some issues around it if you use Docker. Uh, when Magento run Composer dump autoload, it creates autoload files with links to generated classes in generated folder. In production environment with read-only file systems, this is not a problem. But with Magento Cloud Docker, there are situations when you have writable file system, like uh, if you use uh, Docker Compose with test option, and you can run bin Magento stop upgrade without keep generated option. And in this case, generated directory will be deleted and the composer dump of the load command fails because autoload contains links to files in the deleted directory. So this new version, uh, this new option was added to resolve some issues on Docker. Uh, as I said before, we added new validator for Magento mod. Uh, uh, as far as I know, Magento on cloud can work only in production mode. But previously, we didn't have any validation for this. As a result, deploy may happen successfully and everything looks good, for, uh, but uh, it caused issue and it wasn't clear that something wrong and what's wrong. So right now, you can see warning in log about incorrect mod for Magento. And this error had, has code and etc. Um, also, we added details about number of concurrent requests for warm-up in the cloud log. Uh, recently, I suppose in uh, release 2002.1.1, we added information about, not information, uh, we, we added ability to specify number of concurrent requests. And in this release, we added uh, information about numbers into cloud log. Next significant part of our effort is Docker environment, Docker improvements. Um, we, as you can see, there are a lot of different changes. We removed TLS images and now TLS container used in Jinx image, the same as web container. We added possibility to use alternative images in build custom compose command. We added Elasticsearch 7.9. It's also part of preparation for release of 2.4.2. We added options to customize mail, mail hog. I will tell a little bit more later about this. Uh, changed image versioning strategy, and now all images have a Magento Cloud Docker patch version in their names. Uh, updated xDebug functionality and related documentation, and added possibility to install custom Elasticsearch plugins. Uh, let's focus on some of these changes. Uh, First one is uh, new command, build custom compose. Uh, it will be helpful for situation when you need to use specific images or want to have some specific settings in Docker Compose file. Uh, this two screenshots illustrate how it works. Left picture is default Compose file, and using this option you can set custom port or host and get configuration, the same as on the right picture. Uh, let me show how it works also in real example. I'm going to generate default Docker Compose file. Let's take a look. Do you see my editor? Yes. We do. Thank you. So here we have default. Mailhawk configuration for. Uh, and let's generate some custom generation, uh, some custom configuration. And I expect that uh, port numbers and uh, posts should be different. Yes, uh, as I specify here, it should be 1027 and 8027. Okay, uh, let's go for this short example. Uh, let's go next. Uh, 
In previous release, we switched to MailHawk and uh, as the default mail, mail service for Docker. And in this release, we added some flexibility and ability to adjust configuration of MailHawk. So right now you are able to change port. It might be useful to run multiple copies of Docker for development for development or testing. And we added ability to disable MailHawk. Uh, this might be useful for example for CI CD pipelines when you need to minimize needed resources and don't need MailHawk, for example. Uh, also, I'm going to illustrate works. I already showed you shown you previously the MailHawk configuration. Let's remove it using uh, option no MailHawk. So right now you see that we have a big section for MailHawk and expected result after this uh, command there are, shouldn't be MailHawk images at all here. It doesn't exist in this file now. Uh, okay. Go to the next slide. Yes. Uh, new image versioning strategy. In previous Docker version, uh, we stored images only for latest patch version. And it may be a cause of a problem for users who already have everything configured in the specific version. New image was able to broke the existing setup, but right now we can set patch version and don't upgrade to new one. So it make our Docker a little bit more stable. Um, also, we added Elasticsearch plugins. Uh, as I said, the goal of our Docker, the goal of our Cloud Docker is to emulate cloud environment. So when it's possible, we are trying to support the same way to configure settings. On cloud native environments, users are able to add Elastic plugins. So we added the same ability into Docker and keep almost the same way to configure it. Uh, you should just add needed plugins into Magento Services YAML and build compose automatically comment build compose automatically will add plugins into docker compose file if it detects it in uh, magento services yaml it's the same as it works on our cloud uh, also by default some plugins enabled uh, but you can add any custom plugin that's all for Docker. The next topic is patches. In Cloud Patches release, we added alternative patch command for cases when git apply patches isn't available. It can be useful, for example, on-premise installation of Magento. Also, we updated some Symfony dependencies for compatibility with Magento 2.4. Also on-premise. Uh, cloud components. Uh, has one improvement to reduce size of cache log file. Um, that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, me and my team are ready to answer. Let me stop my sharing. Any question? Well, I guess if we don't have any questions, uh, thanks everyone for joining. And you can always find uh, Andre and the other team members on community Slack channels. So feel free to, to pin guys afterwards if you come up with something later. So thanks, Andre. Thanks, everyone else for uh, joining. Yehini, I see some messages in chat. Maybe we can take a look real quick. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's already answered. Thank you, Sasha. Okay, so thank you all for your attention and have a good day and have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.